All right, well, we are here at Lancaster Goodwill today. I'm pretty excited. I haven't been here in a while. The last time I was here, it was super crowded. It was very overwhelming, and I just I couldn't really handle it. So it's been about two months. It's been a really long time. But I'm here today. I'm about to head in and see what I can find that I can flip for a profit. So here we go. <laughs> All right, so this mug right here depicts the artwork A Day in the Wilderness by Bruce Johnson. And I decided to grab the mug just because I really like the artwork. Uh, here we've got two pieces. I have no idea what they are. Uh, they actually weren't even priced, so I assume they were probably from a larger set of something. But I like the butterflies, I like the purple flowers, and I decided that I would figure it out later. <laughs> We've got this piece right here. It is a vase. It is signed Tracy Porter. Unfortunately, vases painted by Tracy Porter don't sell for a whole lot, so I pass on that. Uh, the cake stand I also pass on, even though there is a matchy-matchy there on the shelf. We've got an antique pitcher, but it is transfer, and I decide that I really don't need another transferware pitcher. Got kind of a decorative plate here, but not really something that I need for a resale. I liked the edge on this plate, but it is a modern plate. And here we've got a vase. It is modern Chinese. It has a mark on the bottom. Well, it's vintage. I should say it's vintage Chinese. It, it has a made in China mark on the bottom. I really liked the texture of it, but I just decided that I was gonna pass on that. Here we've got a console bowl. Um, typically these would come with two candlesticks and even though I look at the shelf here to see if the candlesticks are hiding somewhere else, we do not have candlesticks to go with it. So I pass on that. Even with the candlesticks, I probably would have passed um, just because it was clear. I liked this. I liked the, the coloring on it, but uh, just for a single bowl it wasn't worth it. Here, I'm attracted to this piece on the shelf. And so I just completely abandon my cart and I go straight for it. <laughs> Got a nice little bowl here. It's just probably a school piece. It's just initialed on the bottom. And here we've got a little trinket box, satin glass. It's got kind of that frosted glass. We've got this back here. This is kind of like a lucite. I'm not sure if it is lucite, uh, but I decided to grab it because it's fall themed. I like this because I just like the flowers on it. It's dainty, I guess. I just, I liked it. And then down here, I spot this bowl. Now, Yvonne Thrifty Rich, um, who is another YouTuber, she has been raving about this fire and light recycled glass, and I'm determined to find some of it. Um, and so that's why I grabbed that bowl. I'm not even sure if that's what it is, but eventually I'm going to find some because I'm that determined. So I bought the bowl. That's just a little trinket dish. I'm 
trying to do both sides of the shelves here without making you too dizzy. Um, with the arrows and the one-way shelves, it's it's hard to go down the shelves and, and get both sides. Here we've got a Myatt Royal Mail. Now I'm familiar with Myatt and Sons. I'm assuming this is some variation of Myatt and Sons. I've got a cute little ducky here. <laughs> I'm assuming it might be Color Me Mine or some sort of hobbyist piece. Very cute, though. Ooh, this looks like treasure craft. Treasure crafts. I do kind of like that one. Unfortunately, it does have a chip right here. It's only a single. I do love the glaze here. I am tempted. It's kind of an homage to the antique nomad. Hmm, decisions, decisions. <laughs> now I do end up grabbing it and sticking it in my cart. Um, George the Antique Nomad is also another YouTuber, and he actually wrote the book on treasure craft. So I'm always excited to find treasure craft pieces out in the wild because they make me think of George. So I have to take that piece with me. I looked at this because Eric likes fishing pieces, and so I just decided to check it out. But it wasn't very old, and uh, Eric prefers antique, antique pieces, so it just really wasn't a thing. These plates right here, um, they were made in Japan. And so I decided to pass on them. I kind of like the looks of this piece, but there was no markings on it and I decided to pass. I've got a little baggie of painted rocks. And then, of course, we have this hiding down here. Um, this right here is just a decorative tray, I guess you could say. It would have come with little coasters that would have gone with it, um, but it has a butterfly on there and some lace, and I decided to grab that. Now, here we have got this little pitcher, I guess, maybe a creamer. Uh, but it very much reminds me of a Czech pottery design with the cat hanging off of it. Unfortunately, with the chips, I end up leaving it. Here we've got a little soup cup with what looks like a fish on it. I'm assuming that's a fish. Uh, we've got a creamer and sugar here with no markings on them. I do like them, but I like this more. This is a candlestick, and it is marked Limoges on the bottom. Of course, it's got an A on it, but I'm sure that somebody out there has an A in their name and would like a candlestick. This, unfortunately, had a, a crack, and that was cute because it had some cake on it. We've got... A piece of artwork with cardinals. And I just had to fix that because I didn't want it to fall. That's kind of interesting, but it's got a modern mark on it. We've got two art pottery tiles here. They look pretty sloppy, um, and so I don't think that they're anything special. I do like them, but I don't think there's very much resale value there. We've got a little covered sugar there, but there are modern marks on the bottom. That's got a bird on it, and a number 29. All right, so walking by this end cap, something catches my eye, and I reach for this piece right here that appears to be art pottery. It's a very high, glossy glaze, but it does appear to have some age to it, and so 
I checked to see if there's any other pieces. There is a very old ceramic insulator, but that's not something that I really like to mess with. But this, on the other hand, this is something that I will definitely mess with. I kind of liked the colors on this plate, but I turned it over and it was just a collector's plate. Up here, we've got another painted vase. I've got a covered sugar here. Um, I do like this covered sugar, but I can see that some of the gold is lifting there where the tape is, but I decide that it's not terribly bad because they used regular tape. Here we've got a celery dish. Um, unfortunately, the little celery salts are missing, but I will take a large celery dish. And we've got a teapot. That's right, I bought a teapot. Everybody knows I steer clear of teapots, but I decided to get this teapot. It is marked England on the bottom, and I really, I just like it. I liked the shape of it, and I liked the design. There were no chips, no cracks, and I decided to get the teapot. And then I noticed my shoe was coming untied, and I had to fix it. Turning that around just to see what it is. The potter's mark. That's not something that I recognize. Down here we've got a basket, and I look at that a little bit closer. Up here we've got a cat. It's marked the paper place on the bottom. But it's very large and I decide that's not really something I want to mess with as far as shipping goes. Back there there is a cabbage piece of some sort. Now over here we've got a piece that is made in Japan. It kind of reminded me of Royal Copenhagen in the shape. These glasses looked like the they could be silver, and so I decided to look at them, but there was no markings on them anywhere. Here, I really liked the way that this piece was painted. Uh, I'm not sure if it was the same painter as before, but I really liked it and so I decided to grab it and it was very heavy weight. Uh, this reminded me of Italian pottery. I thought maybe it could be a Batosi piece but granted it had modern marks on the bottom and I decided against it. I liked this little flower bouquet. It is pottery. It's got a stamp on the bottom but I just liked it. I thought it was happy. It would look cute on a desk and I liked it. It made me happy. It would make a good gift for somebody, and so I decided to take it with me. I've got a little teapot here. This is kind of a single serve teapot. It's very small, but I like the glaze on it. It's kind of a mauve glaze, similar to a glaze uh, that Royal Hager has. And so I decided to grab this piece. It makes me nervous putting it in the corner, but I think it's going to be all right. I'm a pro at, at this whole cart thing. And here, this is where I find it. This is the Fenton piece that I've been looking for. This, this is um, it's a Fenton ashtray, and it sells for $25 to $35. And then I found an angel. And the angel is marked on the bottom. I kind of point out the mark, but I don't really give you a close-up. There is a mark there on the bottom. And look, a Black Panther, right there. Check it out. This one, however, does appear to be made in Japan. 
It is not American made. Came across these sculptures, these ballerina sculptures. They have a TJ TJ Maxx stickers on the bottom, and they're not really something I would want to mess with. This piece really intrigued me. I decided to grab it. I thought because the bottom was blackened that it could be Raku, and I loved that iridescent glaze on it. Um, so just let me know in the comments if you're thinking Raku as well because I always say Raku and then I'm corrected but I'm pretty sure and it's signed. All right so I am now doing my second round around the shelves. I completed my first round. You guys know I do at least two rounds to make sure that I didn't miss anything and I've got a pretty full cart here. <laughs> really full cart. I'm so pleased with everything that I've gotten. I've gotten some Fenton. I've gotten some Raku. I've gotten some figurines really pleased but I'm just gonna do one more circle to make sure that I didn't miss anything so here we go all right so back here I noticed that there were two dishes and I decided to pull them out and investigate further uh, this one is marked elite works Limoges so this is bow and daughter um, a company out of Limoges unfortunately that one did have a giant crack on it and this one right here didn't have a crack, but for $4.99, I just, I really couldn't do it. It is a beautiful piece, but that's just too much for me. We've got some mustache cups. And I really liked this piece, which is kind of weird. I know. Um, it is a glass vase that somebody just simply painted, and I just, I liked it. We've got this art glass bowl back here. I have to move all of these flashed glasses out of the way. It is $4.99, but it's super heavy, and it's not really something I would want to mess with. I found this piece. It is a pottery piece. Not signed anywhere, but I thought it would make for a nice... Just simple planter. I have no idea what this is. I thought it was interesting. Very interesting. It's weird. Now, I kind of liked this bowl. It's just interesting and different. It's kind of surrounded by the spines of books and you've got Dickens on there and I, I don't remember who some of the other authors were but it was just an interesting piece and I thought it would look nice possibly in an office or a library so I decided to grab it but I had to rearrange my cart to make room. Now here on the top shelf I noticed this vase. It has very, very bright gold paint. It's got these beautiful ribbons on it, and it's just outstanding. I don't know how I missed it the first time, but I did. I missed it, and um, I'm just glad that I caught it on the second round. This is why I always do the shelves multiple times. Right now, I'm showing you my cart so you can admire my skills at, at packing the cart. Here we've got a crystal bowl. It is marked Italy, and I like the looks of the tarnish on the bottom, and so I'm checking the tarnish, um, and I'm checking the bottom to see if it is marked sterling, because it is. A, it seems like a good quality crystal, and I would expect it to be silver. I don't see any markings, though. That guy is fun. Unfortunately, his toe is broken, and I don't want a guy with a broken toe. Here, we've got a little salt. I believe it's a salt cellar. It's got the little spoon in it. The spoon is really what sold me on this because a lot of the times they don't have the spoon anymore. And so the little glass spoon sold me on this guy and he is cut and he is amazing and he goes in my cart. And then this, I found this hiding underneath something. This is 1970s all day. It is an ashtray with golf balls on it. And I thought it was just fantastic. <laughs> and I took it home with me. 
We've got this little ET, I don't even know what that is, a cassette. And then we've got this little Capodimonte ashtray. Capodimonte is from Italy, it is a pottery, and why not? Let's just throw it in there. So our total spend on this trip was $85.53, which for a full cart wasn't that bad. All right, well, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. I am currently at the next Goodwill, but you guys are gonna have to wait for that until tomorrow. And I'll see you then, later. My family calls it my superpower. It's my ability to see value in things that other people might overlook.